think and the first point on the agenda uh, questions and issues open forum does anyone have anything you want to start with Okay, sounds like not. So let's move to the PRs and issues. Uh, I edit some PRs here. So yeah, this one, let's have a look at it. I think that needs some more reviews. Uh, the only look and group, so I guess this should be ready to be merged. Well, this one is yours, I think. I guess you should close it until you have some time to work on it again. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. Last time I said it, I put a PR up and then I put another commit, but I'm still I need time to work on it. Yeah, I can I can close it if. <clears throat> just open the PR when it's fully ready to be taken out of draft mode. Okay, let's close that. And then uh, this one needs reviewers and I don't see Tom and Paolo on the call. So I would say we volunteer them. Right, anyone has any other PRs? Uh, to discuss? Or to check? Paul, I don't think I edited it here, but what about this PR? Can we merge it? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, uh, I was waiting for Paolo's approval, but I think there's there have been enough reviews on it now. Okay. Okay, there are no proposals to be discussed on the agenda. Uh, anyone wants to discuss any proposals? If not, then I guess we can move to the issue triage. So, Kyle, the last time we were missing Paolo for this, Uh, we're missing Paulo or me. I think the last... Well, last last one we were missing you. Now we seem to be missing Paulo. Oh yeah, now we're missing Paulo. Uh, so this one actually, I was just commenting on it now. Um, so <clears throat> the 
this was kind of the idea that Paulo and I came up with uh, these two options. Um, I kind of was leaning towards uh, option one, um, kind of just updating the kind of behavior of what happens in the state machine um, when the spec is updated, um, the, the spec of the Kafka rebalance resource. So um, basically we have, looking at the code, we have kind of logic that will kind of uh, listen for spe uh, spec and annotation changes. So that wouldn't be quite, that wouldn't be, that'd be the changes there wouldn't be that difficult. Um, the kind of question that came up from this was, um, what should we do in the rebalancing state? Um, and so I put kind of two options there. And um, based on the comment you left, Jakob, um, I think we should kind of go with the second option I've listed in the option one proposal. So if you look at um, uh, kind of the second <clears throat> list of uh, Kafka rebalance states, um, where you see rebalancing, um, this is a tricky one, needs more discussion, we could, this or that. Um, I'm kind of privy to the, the second option where we, if someone updates the spec while rebalance is ongoing, um, we stop the current rebalance you know, batch, and then we send a request off for a new proposal. Um, and that would lead the the Kafka rebalance resource would go, would end up in the proposal ready state when it's, oh, sorry, yeah, be proposal ready state when it fetches a new proposal. And then the user can execute that when they're ready. Um, but it would kind of put it in line with the other suggested changes there. Um, this would be kind of, I think, in my opinion, the most um, intuitive and the best UX. Um, it'd be more complicated than option two, but um, I think, but it, Paul and I wanted to kind of pose it to everyone else to see what they thought on it, um, <clears throat> of the suggestions, option one, option two. Anyone on the call has any strong opinions on this? So should we move forward saying we go for option one and stop rebalance and request new proposal if the spec is changed during the rebalancing state? I mean, obviously that's, that's what I would like, but yeah, if anyone else has any other opinions, please voice them. Like this? Does it cover it, Carla? Yeah, that, that's perfect. Okay. Is that something you will work on or should it be help wanted or? Um, I have a, I would put just help wanted on it for now because I promise to work on things, but I've got a bunch of things. And if I if I get to it, I'll I'll just take okay. it over. Then the next issue is this thing. What is it? Right. So it looks like there's some issue in the connector operator, where if connect fails on the wrong place, we badly catch the exception and the reconciliation gets stuck without ever ending. The user provided a lot of different locks. 
I'm not sure if they really explain very exactly is the place where it fails. So yeah, I think there is probably some bug, but yeah, we would need to dig through the code and check what are the possible options where it could fail. It's only twos and threes and zero in the date today. Sorry, that was completely off topic. So I guess we should approve it as a bug and try to look into it. Yeah, it sounds fine by me. Okay, I guess that's not really help wanted or a good start because it will be quite hard to find it. So I guess we keep it just as a bug. Okay, next one is about this guy. We have quite a lot of issues here today. I just got a lot of beefs with the project. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I know, I mean, there's like, there's a couple of, um, there's like, there's many, th uh, thought camps of how we should handle things like this. Um, uh, like we could, uh, in Strimzy, we have the opportunity to make something a little more intuitive and add guardrails. Um, but kind of change the behave, kind of change the um, we can add guardrails using kind of strimsy um, that aren't there with the like kind of bare metal cruise control. And um, some people think these guardrails will make things a little more confusing. I think they'll make them a little more clear. Um, so this one basically, um, when you're configuring goals, um, th there's three types of goals, default goals, hard goals, um, and um, goals, these configurations in cruise control, and there's little rules about how you can configure them. There's little restrictions. Certain, um, certain, of the, uh, certain configurations have to be subsets of others, um, or you'll kind of error out. Um, and these errors are propagated in the, in the log and in the <clears throat> in, in resources, but um, this kind of suggestion is to kind of uh, make it a little more explicit, clear, like what's going wrong and to kind of auto configure it. So the user has can configure less things. Um, this issue specifically, I think, um, uh, yeah, if you set, if a user sets the hard goals, if it's not a, um, the hard goals aren't a subset of default goals, Right, it'll error out. Um, wait, let me see. I can just read the issue. <clears throat> so, uh, can you make it a little smaller? Elliot, uh, and then scroll up a little higher. Yeah, I should open this up on my own screen. So, we had, uh, there was a community Google user, I think. Chat, oh, yes, thank you, thank you. Grab that. So basically, um, we had a user. They just wanted to. They're using some of our ex examples in our docs, um, which were kind of ill listed. I I made them myself. This, and um, they 
the examples didn't work, right? They, the example was showing how to set default goals alone, right? The default goals configuration and that particular example in the docs didn't work, right? Because the... Um, okay, but you fixed that already, right? I fixed it in the docs, yeah, and in the examples. So this is just kind of the... In the docs, we just have to explicitly list them to one to be the subset of the other, right? So it's kind of verbose. So this all this issue is saying is saying we could automatically configure it, um, configure so, the hard goals to match default goals. So then the user. So I guess there are, there are two options, right? You can automatically configure them based on the default goals if they are not set. Yeah. Or you can validate it and throw some error. Or yeah, well, yeah, an error, an error is thrown already, but yeah. Um, but I think in today the error is thrown by cruise control and not by stream zero. Uh, yeah, yeah, we could throw an additional error in in the uh, stream zero. Yeah, we could, so, which we do, which we do with some other configurations um, in cruise uh, for for cruise control and stream zero. Yeah. So I guess my concern about setting the hard goals by default was about the backwards compatibility of it. Can there be a situation when someone has intentionally the default goals not as a subset of the hard goals because they see some purpose in it? Yeah, they're re they're relying on kind of the default uh, the kind of they're relying on hard goals to be the strims default hard goals yeah it, it's possible that they're relying on that yeah, yeah. but what, what value does it give if the default goals like would there be what would be the situation where someone wants to set some custom default goals keep the default hard, hard goals, goals by strims yeah. By Strimzy, yeah. In a situation when these are not not matching, like what would be the use case for that? Um, I I didn't think of one. Um, that's why I was suggesting we automatically configure them. Um, and then another argument against it would be that we could it's possible in Strimzy that we for like a, a later version we update we updated the default hard goal list right so if they did that the user didn't have them explicitly configured it would get messed up anyway um but i can i'm gonna need a little more time to think on that uh, potential uh, i couldn't at the time when i wrote this i didn't see uh, a situation where that would be um, a problem, or that they'd do okay, that. So, so we want to revisit it next time. But you know, let me. Yeah, I. To be honest, I didn't. I didn't really look thoroughly at the the comments yet on this. And let me revisit that, and let let me look at that deeper. Think more on it, and we can come back to it next next time. Okay. Because I want to do this thoroughly. A little bit uneasy with setting hard goals automatically. I think the other way around would be fine. So if you set hard goals, but you not set default goals, you could set default goals to the same list of hard goals. But by automatically saying that any default goals are absolutely are hard goals, you could make it that cross control is not able to generate a rebalance because it can't satisfy the hard goals. And uh, typically, when you realize that, it's when you want to do something, and it could be a bit late. So I would rather, in this case, fail early, just fail to start, and give you a clear message to tell you, you know, this setting must be a superset of this other setting, than being at the point where you need to re generate reassignment, and cross control tells you, well, I, I can't, basically. But, but Mikael, why would you want to set the default goals in a way that they are not superset of the of the hard goals. Doesn't it mean that setting the default goals this way is useless because they will never work?
Well, people goals don't have to be uh, hard goals. Um, right. They don't have to be hard goals, but they don't necessarily have to uh, pass or to direct reassignments. So every time you generate reassignment, the hard goals will always be enforced, basically. Okay, but if you tell them to skip. There's an option to say skip the hard goals if you can't, basically, you're blocked. But here we are talking about a situation when the default goals are missing some of the hard goals. So in cruise control, basically refuse to execute on these default goals. So what is the value of these default of this? configuration it seems like a misconfiguration to me i'm not sure i follow what is the point you're trying to make here i think there's, there's i think the catch proposal here is to uh, update hot goals that's what that's what i read like automatically set hot goals i think i'm a bit uneasy with that i think it was the other way around i think it would be a bit more safe i think Maybe. hot goals could be tricky because you could end up in a case where basically you can't generate a reassignment because uh, you will basically enable all the default goals by as hard goals and uh, they can't be satisfied. The reason why it's a subset of hard goals is because typically you will never be able to satisfy everything. Like <laughs> there was a trade-off you got to make. Um, That's why setting hard goals automatically, uh, to me, it's a bit uh, uh, be careful with that. The way I kind of thought of this now that I'm remembering is that they, when a user provides kind of default goal list, they just want to, they just want to balance their cluster based on these default goals. They don't give a crap about other goals, like these goals listed in this hypothetical situation. They only care about rack awareness replica capacity, disk capacity. They don't give a crap about CPU or network throughput, which are things that are in the default hard goal list, right? And so they, they set this up and they that's all they're concerning themselves with. They just want to do rebalance on these default goals. They don't care about any of the other goals and their rebalance is blocked because they didn't list a new hard goal list to match those only goals that they care about, right? These hard goals, the default list has like CPU capacity, network capacity, things like that. Um, so that's that's kind of the reasoning behind this kind of this auto configuration, right? It is and it is a configuration error. It's it's a user configuration problem, right? Um, so this is more of just a UX improvement. So if a user comes and they I just want to rebalance on these things, the assumption is my assumption is that the user just wants to rebalance on what the default goals are and they don't really I guess like the you could say the hard the default hard goals are there as the kind of a protection right they should be aware of those things but that was kind of my uh reason and I and yeah Mikhail I get your point where you're saying that like oh if they're you know we're protecting the user right if they're maybe there's a reason why like maybe they they think they just they just want to rebalance on these default goals, but maybe they, they don't realize the consequences. They might cut themselves, right? Yeah, if you enforce all helping them, them cut themselves. Goals, you mean not be able to generate to reassignment anymore, basically. It's like, uh, and to me, in this case, you want to fail early, like as soon as uh, as you start your cruise control, you want to validate that. Uh, And, and yeah, right, you're right. Yeah, so I that's so that kind of answers the question that Jakob answered me, asked me earlier. Um, so default goals can have soft goals listed in that list. Yeah. Right. So as just to reiterate what Mikhail's saying that maybe you don't. So if you have a long default goal list, not all of them necessarily need to be have to happen. They some of them can be best case, best try, right? Best effort, From right? We don't necessarily want it. You have more than a handful that we never all satisfy, basically. <laughs> exactly. So if you have a long default goal list, it'll be nearly, uh, okay, yeah, Mikhail, that, I totally get your point. And I honestly, I did not think of that when I, when I was writing this. 
um, but that's a good point against having this auto configuration. Okay, so did we decide that we don't want to have the hard goals auto configured? Uh, I still actually could we yeah I can we just leave uh, let me re-review it just in case I think we'll know Mikhail's suggestion on it because I didn't think of that but I'll I promise I'll get to this before next call and we'll have a resolve then and okay thanks. Okay, next one. I hope this one wasn't me too. <laughs> well, it's not like it's unrelated, but, <laughs> no. it's, but, but it's not you. Uh, so if you look at the Kafka rebalance assembly operator unit test, it doesn't seem to do much, but it takes well over two minutes to execute, which seems to be very long. And it seems to be a complete mess because it's using combination of Mokito mocks and mocked Kubernetes cluster, which is like weird that it's using two different technologies. And for whatever reason, a lot of the tests seem to either take five or 10 seconds. And to me that suggests that there is something wrong in this test because something is waiting for some long timeout or something like that. So I think it should be investigated and should be rewritten and refactored. Anyone has some opinion on it? So this is a unit test, right? You said? Yeah. Yeah, it should definitely not take that long. Yeah, that we should definitely rewrite that. Is this is this a recent thing, or has it always been doing this? Or do you? I know? think it's been always like this. Yeah, that's not. That sounds like buggy. Okay. So. I don't think that's a good start. Anyone would not be super excited to start with that. Uh, should we mark it as a help wanted? Yeah, I'd, I'd mark it help wanted for now, and I'll. I don't I'll think anyone. I don't think anyone will do it because you have to be crazy. But yeah, you never know. I guess to to pick it up as a as a. Yeah. You don't think it's fun? You don't think it'll be a fun thing to look at? No, I don't think so. Okay. Who wrote those tests? Can we get blame? I think Tom Cooper. <laughs> as, oh. as, as long as it's not me, I'm fine. It's all fun and games till you get blame. But I, I did, like, I don't really know if it was like that from the complete beginning there might have been some changes in the meantime and so on so yeah it was fine with two tests but no one 20 and it's not acceptable anymore yeah it's like if you see that the majority of the test takes either five or ten seconds that suggests like there is some timeout issue or something what can be looked into right so Okay, this one is about the system test for a change, uh, Mirror Maker 2 isolated, which uh, is quite messy and directly modifies the user secret with the password to trigger password change. And it does it in a very nasty way where it doesn't just edit the secret, it just blank deletes the old secret and replaces it with a new secret. So I think that should be changed and that should be, it should use the custom password configuration instead of that to trigger the password change. The password change there really just is a mean 
to see that there's a rolling update of Mirror Maker 2 in this case. So I guess that's a bug and it should be fixed or? Yeah, sounds like it. Any labels to set on it? Yeah, we can add the uh, help wanted, but I don't think that anybody would pick that. But we can try. Well, this is a bit more easier and useful to fix. You learn a bit more than with the assembly operator test, to be honest. I would even say this can be maybe a good start because it's not that hard. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Next thing is an idea which I had based on some discussion. And it's mostly for the docs. Like today, when we generate the API reference, we have the annotations for deprecated fields, which is automatically the deprecation note is added to the documentation. But we don't have anything to say like edit in uh, some version. And like it seems that quite often people just go to the latest documentation, check the API reference. But from there, it's not fully obvious if this field is supported in some older version or, or if it's just new in the latest version and so on. So I was wondering if it would make sense to add some new annotation to the API module, which we can use for the new fields and say something like edit in stream Z034 so that the users looking into the documentation can see kind of on a first look that, ah, okay, I'm looking at the latest docs, but using some older version and this field actually doesn't exist there. Like, I guess even for me, this might be useful sometimes because I end up going through the different versions and looking when was this field actually added, for example. Do I've had people a, think similar, this could be useful? Yeah, I've had similar issues. I think that sounds quite nice. Um, my only question for this is, that do we have to go back? Do we have to apply this retroactively to, uh, like, do we have to go back to, like, Strimz 022 and things like I, that? I think if someone wants to volunteer for that, go for it once it's added. But I would say no. I would say we can just use it for the new fields and that's it. Yes, yeah, that's fine by me. Paul, what do you think about it? Just thinking about it. I, I'm always concerned about maintenance. Uh, I, I don't, are there any maintenance, possible maintenance issues with it? Well, I don't think there would be maintenance like you would have basically just a permanent node generated in the documentation in the API reference, which would say edit in Streamsy 34, but you don't necessarily need to yeah. go back. Like maybe after it's present for 10 releases, we would say that it's not useful anymore and go back and delete it in the code maybe, but that should be quite mm -hmm. easy search and replace. And I don't think you necessarily need to kind of after every release, go back and delete all the annotations. Like you can just keep them and you are in version yeah. 2.5. Uh, uh, and it says uh, that the field was the, edited the... in version one. Sorry. Who cares? Yeah, sorry, go on. Mm. Yeah, I'm just wondering about the, so we're going to see these in the API reference. Uh, so I guess we can, do some kind of script or re find a replace for downstream. Would we want, so do we want to just take them out downstream? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess we can just search and replace them. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. We've got, uh, we've got the downstreaming script, which we, uh, we can add, add some more replaces.
the API references do a refresh anyway. Once once we've migrated the other content, we can think about how we want to print, present that material again. Okay. And I guess that's something that we can add help wanted to. As well, if someone wants to do it. Or So this is just some stuff which I opened as part of the Fabricate 6.5 upgrade. That's both the the next two issues. Lukas, did you have a chance to look at how the cube client is used in the system? In, this, yeah, in the system test, we are using the cube client for uh, every call we need to create something. So I guess this will have to be done in uh, one PR, where we will replace it in the test module and also in the system test module. Okay, so I guess we can maybe close this one and merge it into the other one. Yeah, sounds good to me. And uh, can you or someone else from the QE team have a look at it? Because I yeah, don't know sure, when exactly sure. they remove it, but this might be blocking us from the next upgrade when there is some CV and so on. Yeah, sure. We will take a look at it ASAP. Okay, so here we say Okay, you like this? Yep, yeah, thanks a lot. And I guess we keep it without any labels as we need to work on it ourselves. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's closed. It's open. And the last one. This again about system tests. And that's the issue that when you have any connect tests, which use the connect build, 
then there is no environment variable or something to configure the service, the container image registry, which should be used. So it's quite hard to run it locally when you don't use OpenShift or Minikube, which are hard coded into the system test because you cannot really specify any custom repository. And uh, when we are uh, we were writing this, uh, we had a really hard time to make it work on Minikube. So uh, we just hard coded it uh, inside the method you mentioned. And there yeah, we can add one and variable which will take the uh, registry where we will push it. And as a default, we can uh, have the Minikube registry or the OCP registry, which are, we are mentioning in the method. Okay, like this. Yeah, perfect. Sorry for the issues. So do we want to set any labels on it? Uh, yeah, I think it's a good start issue and it can be even help wanted. Okay. So that should be it for the triage. Yeah. Uh, anyone has any other issue they want to raise for the triage? If not, then we wanted to reevaluate the supported Kubernetes versions. So last time we evaluated it was six months ago, roughly. Uh, that's where we moved to Kubernetes 119 plus, uh, and we said we will reevaluate it in six months. I guess the option now would be to support Kubernetes 121 plus. Let me just check if I got it right. Uh, uh yeah so if we move to support 121 plus then that would allow us to drop the code which we have to support port disruption budget v1 beta 1 because that the port disruption budget v1 was added in cube 121 so that would be the simplification of course the test matrix and so on also, the current latest version is 126, so it would still mean we support six different versions, and soon 27 will be released. So, yeah. So, I would like to propose to move to 121 plus and do it the same way as last time. That first in in streams is 35, we would add a warning that it's the last version supporting 119 and 120. And then in uh, uh, 0 036, we would actually support 121 plus only. Anyone's for it or anyone's against it or? Yeah, I agree with that. Sounds okay to me too. Okay, so I guess I will open issue for the 0 for the 6 release and open a PR to add the Warning to the change log for zero thirty five. And that's it for today. Does anyone have any other business? Uh, 
Anything they want to talk about, questions, anything? If not, then I guess that's it. And thanks a lot for joining and see you again in two weeks or around on Slack and mailing list and GitHub discussions and so on. Thanks a lot, everyone. So, thank, thank you very much. Bye. Bye.